Coming up today on The Story. It might feel uncommon for a white person to experience that, but for others it's absolutely common. And I got to walk in the shoes of, you know, this experience allowed me to walk in the shoes of other minorities who might experience this on a, on a daily basis. So the reality is that racism continues to rear its ugly head and it's not pleasant to experience. It's decidedly unpleasant. The Story. The story. G'day, I'm Jimmy Colfax. Welcome to The Story. Well, recently, Pastor David Shaw did something that's pretty common these days. He posted a photo of his family on social media. But then he got a surprising negative reaction. You see, David was born in the UK and raised in Perth. His wife, Becky, is from South Korea. And together, they have three beautiful mixed-race children. So when David posted a photo of his family online, a handful of people from overseas who are complete strangers to him accused him of destroying his bloodline. And one of them even said they wanted Hitler to return soon. Pretty shocking stuff in this day and age. David responded by sharing about his family members and how God is using each of them. And that's what we're going to hear about today as David shares his story and about each member of his family. David Shaw is chatting with Eric Scadabo. David Shaw, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Eric. It's good to be here. Glad to have you on. And you're joining us from Perth, is that right? Yeah, that's right. That's where you are, a pastor there in Perth. And first of all, I just want to say how sorry I am to hear about these online comments, these racist online comments. In this day and age, you would think that that kind of thinking wasn't around, but unfortunately it is in some circles. And as you and I have spoken before, we have something in common. Our children are mixed race, and also we have wives from a different nationality than we are. So I can relate to what you went through. And it's just horrific to hear about online racist comments these days. Yeah, it, was, it came as a bit of a, an unfortunate surprise, um, made for um, an interesting week or so. Thankfully, it's died down now. So, About how many comments did you get? The notifications were coming in 20 or 30 an hour, which is unusual for me. I, I'm a bit of a nobody. <laughs> and I gained about 100 more followers in the space of 24 hours, which is uh, also an uncommon thing for me. <laughs> so. It kind, of, it kind of blew up. Yeah, yeah. So among the comments, there was a handful of negative racist comments, but then a lot yeah. of people were sympathetic to you as well? Oh, there were some amazing people, um, very supportive, and yeah, it was great. The good outweighed the bad in that regard. Oh, that's good. That's good. I really liked how you responded to the racist comments. Uh, you posted back, my family and I are made in the image of God, loved by him, blessed to be a blessing to the people and places to which he has called us. And then you went on to tell a little bit about each of your family members. So you kind of yeah. met the hate and the racism with love and God's word. Yeah, I suppose the, the, the language that was used in response to the picture was quite dehumanizing. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to humanize them again. I wanted to give people a feel for hey, the, these are real people. These are, like, like you say, made in the image and mm-hmm. likeness of God. Um, they have idiosyncrasies, personality traits, loves, fears. And I just wanted to bring that human side to the fore and to, to sort of push back and say, hey, that, 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 that's not how this ought to be. These are real people. These are family. Yeah. They, are, they are sons and daughters. They are flesh and blood. Brothers and sisters, flesh yeah. and blood. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's harder for people to hate and be divisive when they know something about the people. So you humanized your family members, which we were going to do during the course of this conversation. But I think one of the things that shocked me about it is that when you think of racism, you think about, you know, Hitler, it's one of the racist comments even mentioned, you know, you think about that's back in the forties, that was the Holocaust. That was, you know, all that thinking of certain Mm -hmm. races are better than other races and that, we can't have them intermingle because then you're going to dilute them and all this kind of, uh, you know, backwards thinking. How did you respond to that? Were you pretty shocked as well? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it, it certainly wasn't pleasant. And the reality is that there are other groups of people who deal with this on a much more regular basis than mm-hmm. myself. Yeah. You know, um, I got to walk in the shoes of, you know, this experience allowed me to walk in the shoes of, other minorities who might experience this on a on a daily basis. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I in no way claim to be an expert uh, mm-hmm. in that regard, yeah. um, but it's a somewhat frightening and enlightening experience to be on the receiving end. And 
yeah, it, it just gives, I, I suppose there's greater, having been on the receiving end, I ought to have greater empathy for those who experience this on the daily. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it, it might feel uncommon for a white person to experience that, mm -hmm. but for others, it's absolutely common. And, you know, whether it's the 1940s or whether it's today, um, the reality is that racism continues to rear its ugly head and it's not pleasant to experience. Yeah. It's decidedly unpleasant. Yeah. Now you are a pastor and we're going to get to your story in just a moment, but I was just thinking if you encountered somebody in person, maybe they came into your church and they said, you know, I, I'm kind of sympathetic to that view that, you know, different people of different races, they, they shouldn't intermingle like that. That's diluting the bloodline or whatever they're saying. Mm -hmm. As a Christian, how would you respond, even though you, <laughs> like, like every fiber of your being would probably be offended, but how would you lovingly respond as a pastor? Um, I suppose the, the first thing you'd want to do is ask, wh where do they get that? Mm, yeah. on, on, on what grounds are they making that claim? Um, and oftentimes there's usually a story underneath the question. Mm. Um, so I'd, I'd actually want to get to know the story before responding in kind, but certainly and purely from a theological perspective, mm -hmm. um, to understand that from Genesis, it's clear that humanity is made in the image of God. Amen. And that is what unites us within the old Testament. You have examples of mixed race marriages uh you can think of say moses and keturah mm -hmm. um, you can think of boaz and ruth as some a couple of examples there and as you move into the new testament you get paul talking in ephesians 2 about the dividing wall of hostility being broken down mm -hmm. between jews and gentiles um one of my favorite passages comes from first peter which i did quite a bit of research on where peter talks about the church as being a chosen race mm -hmm. and a royal priesthood and a yeah, holy nation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, the summary, the climax of that is that you are a people belonging to God. And in the context, he's talking to people from Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. And these are not people who would have considered themselves a singular entity, that they would have had different languages. Mm -hmm. They would have had um, you know, Greek, Greek would have been a common language among them, but they would have had native languages. They would have different cultures, different cultures, mm -hmm. like with probably some overlap, but certainly mm -hmm. differences. And Peter can say to them, you together are a single chosen race, a royal mm -hmm. priesthood, a, a holy nation that what defines you is less your geography than your in Christness, that you yeah. belong to God and it's um, the spiritual dimension reigns supreme. Yeah, it, it mm -hmm. sort of it, it's that umbrella under which we all stand. And Christ, you you know, unites us. And you know, Paul elsewhere talks about no Jew nor Gentile, or Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the emphasis there being that God saves all kinds of people from all kinds of backgrounds and mm -hmm. brings them into a singular people under His lordship. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a really beautiful thing. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, there's going to be all kinds of people from all kinds of nationalities and races, all praising mm -hmm. the Lord together. And the other verse that I love that I'd like to add in there quite simply is the Bible says that man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. And that mm -hmm. pretty much sums it up. Yeah. I think that, you know, this side of Pentecost, if you like, that, that you look at the heart and if you're in Christ, you have the Holy Spirit and what sets God's family apart, if you like, is not where they are from or the the color of their skin, but mm -hmm. that they have that that the marker, if I can use that expression, uh, is the spirit. Amen. Yeah, yeah. It's the spirit. Um, that's what's most important. And yeah, that 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 that's a game changer. Yeah. So when you met Becky, not to get too far ahead of ourselves here in your story, but obviously. I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were attracted to her love of the Lord? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we we, we met in a seminary and um, took about the better part of 18 months to get our act together. But yeah, it was absolute her character, her love of the Lord. Um, okay, uh, well, we'll get uh, to a bit of the love we'll story that later. In, in a bit. Let's yeah. backtrack to you and your story. Born in the UK. 
Mm -hmm. What year was that? Uh, 1980. Um, born in the UK, Nottingham. And um, there's quite a, it's a complicated history. So um, yeah, my, my birth mother died when I was just before my fourth birthday. And uh, so my father at that point was a widower with mm -hmm. three children under the age of four. Oh, so wow. I had a brother uh, about two years younger than me, had a sister who was barely three or four months old when my mother passed. And uh, a couple of years later, he met another woman who is now my mum, mm -hmm. and her first husband died. So she was a widow, and uh, he died when she was pregnant with their first child. And so they met, they had this similar trauma, I suppose you might say. Yeah, yeah. And that brought them together, and um, they decided they wanted a clean slate and a fresh start, and they wanted, to, I think, to my mind at least, I don't know if they would put it this way, but I think they wanted to leave death and darkness and gray skies mm -hmm. behind <laughs> um, lots of gray skies in the uk yeah and you know uh for those familiar with australian soap operas uh my mum and dad fancied it a little bit of the ramsey street lifestyle uh from neighbors oh so so they were watching in the uk they were watching the soap opera neighbors and wanted a bit that's of that. right that's yeah. what okay in their they mind that that's lifestyle. australia exactly okay yep yep and so uh in 1988, we made the move to Perth as a family mm -hmm. of uh, six, myself, my brother and sister, and my stepsister, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, she's my sister. Um, and then they had another child once they got to Australia. So that's my youngest brother. You're listening to The Story. Today, Eric Scadabo is chatting with Pastor David Shaw, who's sharing his life journey and about how he responded to racist comments he received after he posted a photo of his mixed race family online. We'll hear more of David's story when we return. The Story. 